Silver. It is Wednesday, November 2nd. Welcome to November, everyone. Wow, October went really, really quickly. I've actually been pretty busy since the last time I've recorded. I feel like I got so much done, even though there was so much going on in my personal life these past couple weeks. Anyway, thank you to those that continue to come back, even with all the shenanigans I get up to. Thank you to those that have decided to give my podcast a try. I really appreciate you. Now, before we get started, I would like to take a second to ask everyone to pray for the young people who were shot last night in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, The Lala of the Nick Girls actually made me aware of this tragedy that happened. Um, I just, you know, in fact, let's just take a moment to pray and think think about all those that have been affected by violence, especially over the past couple months. Okay, so thank you for doing that for me. I've been thinking a lot about how each community is affected by the violence that touches it and how each one deserves our prayers and thoughts. Anyway, all right, so let's just get started with something a little bit more happy, shall we? So grab your drink of choice, your crafting, and away we go. So first off, one of my favorite things this week, uh, Pandora Radio. I know it sounds like an ad, but you can pick whatever you want to listen to, even if you don't own the album. There are times that I feel I was born in the wrong decade. As an example, I was sitting here gathering my thoughts, and there were quite a few thoughts, mind you, and a lot of notes that I've been taking throughout the past couple weeks that I have to kind of put together to make sense for you, I guess, because, yeah, my brain's a little miscombobulated. Anyway, um, as I was sitting here gathering my thoughts before recording, I was listening to Elvis Presley Radio. Wow. (laughs) There was an intro from Priscilla, and I totally geeked out. And yes, that is in capital letters. Every song made me smile. I just couldn't help it. And every song after that tended to about that same decade and a little bit later. Don't know why, but I was feeling in that kind of mood. Another thing I like is Mario is deciding he wants to say hi to everyone in the background. Don't know if you can hear it, but in case you do, he's uh, waiting for Daddy to come home. It's about 20 after 4 in the afternoon, and he starts his meow, meow, meow until he gets home starting about now. Uh, so the, sec- the next thing I want to talk about that I actually enjoy, we had a lot of fun of Katie and we- Andy's wedding on the 22nd. MTI and I had a lot of fun. Actually... I think MTI had more fun. He definitely drank more, as evidenced by his hangover the next day. Sorry, honey. You're a lightweight, and everyone needs to know it. (laughs) But to be fair, I was too worried about having a wardrobe malfunction while dancing. I won't go into the details and why I was worrying about that kind of thing, as it's pretty silly. I mean, what kind of impression would that be in front of MTI's Grammy and Poppy, right? But my hair still looked pretty boss. I call it my pixie hairdo. Sorry about the bad lighting, but I wanted to show you a picture of my hair as soon as it had done. As, as soon as I had finished it. Wow, grimmer sometimes, right? Uh, there was also a gift bag that came directly from the bride and groom. Um, it included Advil and water bottles, which really came in handy the morning after, as well as a bunch of candy and other snacks that they absolutely love. And it worked out in our favor because they were a lot of different snacks and stuff that we were able to eat on the way home. It made MTI feel a little bit better, (laughs) but enough about that. The next thing that I really want to say is happy belated Halloween, everyone. This is my favorite holiday of the year. In fact, it takes me over a month to get ready for it. I'm Wiccan, so there's always a lot to do to get myself and the house ready for the Samhain Sabbath. Yes, that's what we call it. 
This year, I was actually determined to make it all my own and different from last year. I didn't commit to parties or trick-or-treaters or anything like that. I did what I wanted to do, and that is very rare for me. I managed to cleanse the house. Um, it's very, very nice now. And I also cleansed it as well as just knit what I wanted to and did what I wanted to essentially all while MTI was at work. I feel like all the bad juju that has been brought into our house over the past couple, past couple months have just left completely. And I feel awesome. And I'm excited to see what this new turn of the wheel will bring to us. So another thing I absolutely love, surprise trips. So I was actually asked by my mom a week ago, maybe a little bit more now, if I wanted to take a trip with her and my sister to Florida starting on the 13th. We are planning on visiting with my aunts, cousins, and grandparents while we're down there. There was even talk of a surprise trip to Epcot. So we'll see how that goes, right? I am super excited and I have been planning and just making my usual traveling lists. I won't bore you with the details, but there are quite a few already and I just started. <laughs> I haven't even gotten into the minute details. Hey, I already know what I'm going to pack though. Well, I know what I'm packing for knitting anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, the next thing that I absolutely love this week. I had quite a bit of enabling, and I don't think I can pick just one thing that I love the most, so I'm not even going to try. I had a shipment from Webs this week. I've gotten a chance to try out each of these needles that came in the mail. Um, I'll tell you what I think about each as I get down to the, the work in progress they're on, but uh, here's kind of a teaser. Yes, I did get some size 6s and 7s uh, cabled, uh, sorry, marbles fixed circulars. They are 24 inch size each. Um, I didn't get a picture of the next couple that I got. They are the Carbons double point needles by Knitter's Pride. I did get size 1s and size 2s. Now, these next four things that I've got in the mail was actually for a Think Geek, Think Geek, wow, Think Geek shipment. The first two I kind of lumped together because they are amazing and they're awesome and they are all mine. There is no way MTI is going to eat, <laughs> eat, drink out of this TARDIS mug or use this TARDIS notebook. I'm telling you, I brought those to work on hot, like the couple days before Halloween where they were dressing up and I said, hey, I'm dressing as my usual geeky self. So I brought a few things. Um, the other thing that I got in the shipment was actually a geeky calendar. I won't be sharing a picture of it as I know that the recipient watches the podcast. I'm not even going to tell you who that is. Anyway, the next thing that I did get in that same shipment was two different Star Trek beer steins. They're absolutely amazing. I mean, look at them. They're just, oh, I cannot wait to see what the recipient thinks of it during the holidays. Let's see. The next thing that came in the mail this week was a bag from Slip, Slip Stitch Studio. It is a Snape inspired inspired bag. Wow, I'm sorry. My tongue is tied today. I honestly could not wait to put a project into it. It's awesome and it has all of my favorite Snape sayings on it. And it came in handy. I was watching a lot of, uh, well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> uh, the next thing that actually came in the mail this week was an Amazon shipment. I had ordered Cards Against Humanity. Um, basically, always wanted to play while I was at gaming events and now I don't have excuse not to play it. I also did get two mixed packs of 3,600 8-aught glass beads in blue hues by Panda Hall. Um, I'll be using these packs for a wedding shawl on a shawl for myself. I'll explain a little bit more about that once I get under the needle adjacent section, I promise. Let's see. The sixth thing on my list of favorites this week i told you there's a lot um we have had two gray's boxes since the last time that i recorded mti and i have noticed that a lot of our favorites are being recycled faster and we're getting a lot of repeats which is why we're still kind of we're we're 
kind of discussing what we're going to do with this from now on. Um, I'm sure you'll see what I mean when I list off what came in each box. I am partial to giving up on it, but he still likes getting mail for both of us every week. That's not bills, so the discussion continues. Let's see. In the first box, we had the white chocolate dipped dip, sorry, and wild berry toasts. We also had the sour cream and onion cashews. We had the pumpkin spice slapjack. Ah, I loved that one. I honestly just wish there was more. Um, there was also the Garden of England, which Mar, which Mar, uh, sorry, MDI really, really seems to like. So he pretty much just got it with that one, which is fine because yeah. There was also the cinnamon pretzel that also went really fast. There was the salted caramel chocolate cookie. Uh, one word, <laughs> yum, <laughs> so good. Uh, we also had the chocolate cherry protein granola topper. That's another one that Empty Eye seems to like. Uh, I keep trying it and I, I'm still not impressed. But anyway, um, the cookies and cream was another one. Um, another one root word review from both Empty Eye and I. Yummo! Or, yeah. Anyway, um, the second box actually showed up this past Monday. And yeah, there are a couple of completely gone already um we had the peaches and cream we also had the protein peanut butter dipper with the baked pretzel sticks this one's already gone um as mti really is not a fan of peanut butter anyone that knows him knows this um but it's funny this this one came in at the perfect time i was actually craving a peanut butter something fierce um as evidenced by the fact in the same box there was the peanut butter and jelly which i also esconded with um we also had the sesame garlic crunch in there the summer berry flapjack oh i love that i have to stop myself from eating the last bite because you know mti definitely should have at least some of it right and uh, then there was the pizza margarita. Oh, we absolutely love that. That's just about gone. I'm trying to, again, save some for MDI. And there was also the jelly donut in there. So there was pretty, pretty fair amount of repeats in that one. But we were okay with the repeats that came, except for maybe one or two. Um, not in favorites for me or non-favorites for him, that kind of thing. Let's see, on to the next section. We have the KAL Watch 2016 going on. Looks like there is just a little bit of a recap of the Halloween. Craft all the things from the, from the sorry, wow, <laughs> from the Nick girls. You swear I, I haven't done this 17 times, right? <laughs> anyway, so two hoes make a foe. That's how this works, right? Anyway. I actually finished a pair of socks this week. In fact, I finished this about four hours before the deadline for the craft all the things. <laughs> I call it, I'll get you my pretty. See both of them together. It is the Toe Up Socks with a Difference by Wendy D. Johnson. The yarn is actually called Witch's Brew on the House Gnome base of Gnome Acres. And then I did those on a size US 2 16 inch circulars, the two needle method. Yay! So pretty! Let's see. The next KAL that I want to mention is the Down Abbey KAL going on that I've actually been participating in slowly over the past couple days. Um, there are a few rules and guidelines that have been added to the Ravelry group. Um, I've also added them to the KAL and in craft crochet along section of my website. So if you happen to miss one, they'll be all there listed for you. This uh, a K K C A L. Oh. Wow, spelling. This, this KAL runs from November 1st to November 30th. Whips are allowed. You must, however, finish your project during the month of November. All projects submitted to the FO thread must have something to do with Downton Abbey. Your projects must be inspired by the characters, settings, events, themes, costumes, etc. And it may be a pattern that is inspired by Downton Abbey or yarns named after Downton Abbey, etc. Uh, there's going to be a FO thread and a chatter thread on the um i'm sorry on the, the knitted broomsticks uh website there and i'll link all that don't worry about that you actually may submit as many fo's as you would like and just so you know every fo that you put in there as well you can 
enter in my whip down as well, so you know. So poly dipping is uh, is absolutely fine. Um, they they must be a Ravelry group. It could uh, craft rather. She could be anything from knitting, crocheting, weaving, and spinning. The prize winners of this will actually have 30 days from the day the podcast announcement goes live to claim their prize, and then Jilly will be awarding them to somebody else at that point if that happens. But anyway, I'll, I'll make sure you get all those links exactly, both in the podcast notes and on the the uh, KAL section of the website. That way you can find everything you need for that. All right, so what I'm actually been planning on entering for this KAL, I have two different cowls planned. The first I've already started. This one is called the Upstairs Downstairs Cowl. It's a cowl in three sizes, which is by Paula Emmons Fuzel, I think is how you pronounce her last name. I do apologize, Paula. Um, this one's going to be out of the Squash Blossom on the Yowza Miss Babs yarn. Oh, absolutely love it so far. So far, so good. It will be on a size US 7, 29 inch Susan Bates circulars. The second one will also be on the same size, um, just out of, it'll, and it'll be the same yarn and the same pattern. It'll be out of the cor- a coral colorway. Oh, absolutely love that color, and I cannot wait to get started on it. The third thing I hope to finish is going to be um, what I'm calling the Farewell Downton Socks. Um, I have yet to cast both this and the other cowl on. Um, Not sure um, if I'm even going to get to this third thing. I know for sure the other two I will. Um, The pattern that I plan on using is called Downton Farewell by Philo Lagerman. I think that's how you pronounce the last name. Again, I am so bad with people's names. I do apologize. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I do apologize. It's going to be used out of um, a color of Dream and Color Smushy number 17, which they call Torchwood. That one I do plan on using a size 2 US 2 16 inch circular. It's my usual method on that one as well, because I know it's got a lot of patterning. It'll be awesome. All right. Sorry, I had to drink. take a drink there. A um, little bit of administrative about Silver's Wit down 2016. I'm just going to reflect a little bit on October, kind of look back and kind of figure out from there. I had a total yardage of 2,356 yards in six different projects this time around. So that was a greatly improvement. I did exactly what I set out to do and finish more things this month. I hope to finish more next month, but that's a horse of a different color, as I keep saying recently. The first thing, I'm just going to go back through kind of quickly um, the details of each one. The first one I finished was the Progressive Progression Shawl. This one was 778 yards. It's called the Progression Shawl by Karen with the Round the Twist podcast out of the Scorpion Gradient Miss Babs 2 Ply Yummy Yarn on size US 4 Metal Bates 29 inch circulars. The second thing I finished was a test knit for Boston Jen. She's calling right now Emmeline May Shawl. It still has not been officially released, so the name is still subject to change. I actually called this my Franken Peach Shawl. Oh, absolutely love it. There was two colorways I used on this one. The first was Frankenberry, which was by Appendia's Jewels, and Giant Peach by Dreamy Color Smushy. And I did this on a size US 6 40 inch Cubics Platina by Knitter's Pride. I am still in love with this shawl and I've gotten so many, many nice comments from people that I work with and every time I wear it, you know, the same kind of thing as well. The next thing that I did finish was what I call Kelly Lives Upstairs. It's the 400, it's 424 yards roughly of the My Kelly colorway of Yowza Miss Babs. It is the pattern Upstairs Downstairs Cowl, the cowl in three sizes by Paula Emmett Fuzel. Also on a size US 7, 29 inch, cir- uh, me- sorry, Susan Bates circulars. Wow, I'm just tripping on my words today. The next thing that you probably haven't seen anywhere except maybe on Instagram, is called Tate It a Grand Purple. It is a pair of socks. This is a top socks of the difference by Wendy D. Johnson out of 300 yards of colorway Tate by Baraka Sock. Here's the second one there. With the heel, the heel's on the back. It's hiding. Ha! 
anywho, um, I did that on a size US 2, 16 inch circulars. There are two of them, my usual method. Now, this next one you have not seen yet. I finished, started it and finished it within three days this past week, actually. Um, I'm calling it Everyone Loves a Kit Kat. It's 120, I'm sorry, 110 yards of the Cascade 220 uh, colorway 9862. It is absolutely blue and gorgeous. The pattern itself is the Kit Kat hat by Andre Sue. I did that on a size US 7 16 inch circular Susan Beats base needles and I have to say they came out completely awesome. And I've already given it to MDI. He absolutely loved it. He see, he's a pretty good sport, so thank you, honey. I really do appreciate modeling that for me. Uh, yeah, so, and finally, the last thing that I did mention before was the I'll Get You My Pretty socks. I ended up doing, uh, using about 280 yards of that Witch's Brew yarn. They came out amazing. Um, so, the other little bit of administrative about the whip down, um, there were no winners for October, so, uh, mostly because nobody entered. I really am sorry about that. I wish somebody had come by and at least posted something, because then, yay, winners! I love having people come by and post their pretties. So, remember, anything that you finish at all throughout the mo month of, no of November will count. So, please get them in. Please get them in. Hey, did I mention I've got prizes? Yes, the biggest little bit of news, I am going to be offering up a scout, uh, sorry, a skein, a skein of Yowza from Miss Babs. I am going to let you select the colorway. There's also going to be a set of stitch markers. They're amazing. Absolutely love them. And there's also going to be, um, so they're going to be another $10 pattern or less from Ravelry. So now we are up to a total of five for next month's drawing. So count that. That's seven different, seven different prizes you can win. Make sure you get in. All right. Enough of me tooting my own horn there. Uh, let's go on to what I worked on this week. The first thing that I'm going to mention, I did do one rotation of the pattern. I'll explain why in a second, but it is the Hitching a Ride on the Gray Train. The pattern is Hitchhiker by Martina Bem out of the Gray Marl Patents Croy colorway. It's currently on size US 6 Marbles Needles, which is the 24 inch fixed circulars that I bought and I mentioned in enabling. I love the way the knit is going right now, but the cable is a little too short for the finished object I anticipate is going to be a little bit wider than what it is now. So I may have to switch up to the needles, you know, the different lengths as it grows. Um, thankfully that won't be for a bit, however, I am enjoying this knit absolutely love it now um it seems to be going a little bit faster now that i have some pretty neat pretty needles in the background while i'm knitting i was starting to lose faith because gray you know because gray <laughs> um the next thing that i'm going to talk about is i actually decided to change up the colorway on the on this again um it's going to stick i promise um i've actually gotten to the halfway point and I am so in love with how this is knitting, is, is working out. It, the pattern itself is called The Night's Watch by Laura Smoot out of the Somebody's Mad here. It's a self-striping by Desert, Desert Vista Dye Works. Wow, I am sorry about that. It's a, I'm doing this on a size US 7's 24 inch mixed the marble cirque. Marble circs, huh? I'd have to go and look about that. No marble circs on that one anymore. I did switch those up. That's a size four. Yeah, that is a size. Four. I'm looking at it now and I can see. <laughs> Silly me. It's a size four metal circs. They are the 29 inch circulars that I have. Oy. I need to like stop just reading my notes straight from the notes, right? <laughs> All right, anyway, so the next thing that I worked on this week was I'm calling the Ketter Dance. It's the Ketter Dance by Lala of the Knit Girls podcast. It's the colorway Let's Do the Time Warp Again by the Unwind Yarn Company. It's the On the Journey Sock. Oh, 
Absolutely gorgeous. And see, those are where the US 7 24 inch marble fix needles are. Holy bananas. I am so sorry. But aren't those things pretty? Oh, it's a good combination. And it has gone so fast since I use, I'm started using those needles. Oh, absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to get back to that. But I know I will eventually have to expand to a longer cable. But right now, that's neither here nor there. The fifth thing that I actually currently have on the needles is the Judy's Wrapped Up in Purple. And, and as you can see, it's just the beginning of a toe. I literally just started this last night before I went to bed just to say, hey, it's on the needles. I'm going to be using the Toe Up Socks with a Difference Pattern by Wendy D. Johnson again. Um, it's going to be out of the Simply Sock Yarn Company Purple colorway. I think that's exactly what it's called. But it's purple. It's a very purple colorway. I'm going to be using size 2 US 260 unit circulars as I usually do on that one. And it's so far so good. I absolutely love it. And I hope I get to six, 64 stitches and that's good. I may have to go a little bit more depending on what my gauge is. But I will figure that out as soon as I get back to it, I promise. The sixth thing that I've been working on this week, I'm calling it Snapely Love. This is the Snape's Stockings pattern by Erica Luter. I'm using pad, uh, colorway 591 of Trekking XXL. It's basically blue tones. Absolutely gorgeous, and I love working on it. I'm using a size, was a size 2, the 8 inch DPN's Carbons Needles by Knitter's Pride. They are absolutely wonderful to work with they are so smooth i mean at first i was worried that i would stab myself too much and drive myself crazy with the pointy needles but the pointy needles make this a quick knit so since i've actually changed the needles the knit has gone by so fast and smooth i am about a half a repeat away from getting to the heel on that one already because fdi does not want a large cuff like i do but that's, not, that's neither here nor there i absolutely love the way that this is knitting up. Sorry about the background photo there. There's only a certain number of ways that I can hold up a DPN and kind of show off the pattern at the same time. So you kind of get the glare from the computer. Um, the last thing that I'm going to mention working on this week I am, is called the Pink Weave Lesson 3. I've actually added a few pattern rotations since the last time we've talked about this. Um, mostly because I realized that the mother... Uh, the co-worker, the mother that I've been making this for, is coming back to work soon, and I wanted to make sure she gets it sooner rather than later. This week, I've been pretty much jetting on it, trying to get as much as I can done. Um, the pattern is a pattern I've created. I call it the Basket Weave Baby Blanket. It is absolutely working up awesome right now. I'm up to 24, roughly 24 inches as of early this morning. I'm using the Baby Pink Marl, um, which is a Bernat Softy Baby colorway. It is also a size US 7 29 inch circular needles. I absolutely love the way this is working up and I can pretty much almost use this as a lap blanket. That's how long that is right now. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I can't stop staring at the picture and I really want to go back to working on it right now but Y'all know me, and yeah, <laughs> I cannot knit and talk to you guys at the same time, apparently. Um, but anyway, you see where that stitch marker is? That's actually the um, since the last time I took a photo and showed you. So, needle adjacent. I am planning two different projects. One is going to be a wedding shawl for a future sister-in-law. She actually already knows about it, as I pretty much asked her what her favorite color was colors were and what kind of theme she was going with for the wedding. So um, it actually may take me the entire year before she and MDI's brother get married to finish it though. Um, I do have the beads, which I mentioned before. I have a lot of them in hues of blue. She's apparently doing uh, different color blues for her bridesmaid dresses. So that would be perfect, especially on white yarn. Um, the yarn itself should be coming to me momentarily, well, not momentarily, maybe within a couple weeks. Please, guys, don't let me forget that it's coming because it's a being special ordered and died for me for the wedding. So it'd be awesome. And I'm also planning on making one of that same type of shawl for myself as well. Um, if you haven't heard, I've always wanted to do an even star, and this will 
hopefully, hopefully two of them will get me good practice, right? <laughs> anyway, um, um, the second thing I'm also working on, or going to be working on, I've been thinking about participating in the Laurel eyes spelled l-o-r-e-l then second word e-y-e-s binge mystery knit along that is being hosted by renegade knitwear who has actually partnered with jimmy beans wool and lorna's laces oh i cannot wait to get started there's going to be three different clues released over the course of three days uh, clue one will come out on november 25th and it is the also the release date where the gilmore rose reboot so perfect timing Better get your orders in soon if you're going to participate. The details of everything can be found directly on Ravelry. If you look up Laurel, L-O-R-E-L, then E-Y-E-S, binge M-Cal. You can definitely look that up as well, um, or you can follow the link. I'll make sure it's in the podcast notes, and I'll be making a special section under the KAL blog part as well. That way you can find all the details there. All right, I'm going to take a quick drink, and we will continue with What You Watch in Silver. It's been a busy couple of weeks for um, stuff that I've been watching, hence all the work that I've been getting done. Um, let's start with TV. I've been watching a lot of Gilmore Girls. Um, it's fair to say that we pretty much didn't get to know April very well before I stopped watching. Um, but for all those fans that know, you'll know kind of what episodes I'm on. Uh, it's been more of a let's watch a lot of movies week uh started off with practical magic the craft and then i just decided hey let's watch all through all the way through the harry potter movies i watched through the sorcerer's stone changer chamber of secrets prisoner of azkaban goblet of fire order of the phoenix and then you had a half blood prince i stopped there only because i needed to get going on the podcast there was a lot of notes i realized to get through Let's see. I've also been doing some YouTube binge watching as well. Um, Mostly Ellen videos. Specifically the ones where Andy and a few others go into haunted houses and they record it. Yeah. (laughs) I have to tell you, my favorite moment is when Andy gets so scared that he starts yelling at the actors in the haunted house to stop it! Stop it now! Well, that was until I saw this year's walk through. I'll have to link the YouTube videos to both so you can kind of see for yourself how awesome they were. Let's see these. The other thing that I I was watching was the Slow TV's edition of uh, National Knit Night. I finally found the recording that Sweden did in 2013, I think it was, of the Sheep Sheep to Sweater Challenge. Basically, it was an awesome amount of eight hours of them shear, going from shearing to spinning to knitting this sweater. Oh, unbelievably awesome. I was cheering them on the entire time. I could not stop watching it. It was so epic. I just, I, and now I know why it was actually recommended to me by both Netflix and people that I've actually listened to on podcasts. So yes, get to it. I will make sure to put a link to that as well. Let's see. So speaking of podcasts, I am still watch uh, binge watching through the Geeky Girls Knit podcast since I recorded last. I've watched episodes 32, roughly to about 46. In between everything else, I've been catching up with. Um, I've also been catching up with the Knit Girls, uh, also the Innis Knit, a few others. Um, I recently found the Yarn Hoarder podcast. She's absolutely new to me. Probably relatively new in terms of um in terms of her podcasting, but she is awesome and I just cannot get enough of her already. So well done. Well done. Like I said, rave reviews all around. <laughs> so what you watch in silver? Uh quite a bit. Or sorry, what I'm what I'm watching. I do this every time. What I'm reading is quite a bit as well. Um, for finished, I've actually been updating my reading blog on uh, dr- the dreamysilver2112.com with each book's review. If you want more on each, I'm just going to list them off for you now as I've been talking a while at this point. So, 
First, a correction from last time. I actually had finished the Demi Makeover book that I had mentioned before I recorded last time. Sorry about that. Let's see. I also finished Rock Trick Redemption by Chris and Ash. Ashley, yes. Hot Sick. Sick. Hot Six by Janet Ivankovich and a bunch of romance stories. In fact, at last count, there were 13 of them. I am not going to list them all off as there are a few. Well, that and the fact that I'm pretty sure I don't want to share too much information about my eclectic collection. So we'll just leave it at that. I am currently reading through Seven Up by Janet Ivakovich, also reading Hot Chick Renegade by Christian Ashley. I'm just listening to that one. Love it. Absolutely love it. I just started, was probably been an hour before I went to bed last night. I'm also still listening to the BBC dramatized edition of the Jane Austen's most favorite books famous books. Wow. It has David Tennant. It also has David Cumberbatch and a bunch and a bunch of other British actors and actresses that I absolutely love. So I'm still enjoying this version. It's making me so happy right now. Um, I'm kind of taking my time and listening to in the mornings when I'm getting ready for work and that kind of thing as well. Uh, The last thing that I am currently reading, I've been slowly reading through a book that I will be reviewing for my blog as well. It's a book that won't be released until 11.15, and I have been asked by the publishers to not include my review of the book until that day. So keep an eye out for for that. It will be on my dreamy dreamy silverware. Wow. Dreamy silver blog, which I'll actually link to this episode's notes once it actually goes live. Um, That way you can kind of read for yourself and kind of judge for yourself. I won't even give you the title. I'm not even going to give you the artist's name because I'm not even sure how I feel about the book yet. I'm only about about nine chapters in. It's a physical copy of the book, so I have to, you know, read it before husband goes to bed or, you know, when I'm still kind of awake. Yeah, otherwise falling asleep on books is kind of what I used to do all through high school and college. So yeah, anyway. um, So I am pretty social. You can find me on our Ravelry board, which is Silver's Dreamland podcast. I am Silver Luna 2112 there. On Facebook, Silver's Dreamland can be found at www.facebook.com backslash Silver's Dreamland. On Instagram, I am both Silver's Treats and Silver's Dreamland. Uh, Silver's Treats will probably get you an easier response, just so you know. On Twitter, I am at Silver's Knitting. I do tend to read through all messages as soon as I possibly can. If you don't hear from me within 24 hours, please feel free to email me directly at silversdreamland at gmail.com. I am going to leave you the final thought this week. Here is actually a quote from my favorite foreigner song, because some weeks you just need something to remind you that you're not alone in this crazy world. In my life, there's been heartache and pain. I don't know if I can face it again. Can't stop now. I've traveled so far to change this lonely life. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. I want to feel what love is. I know you can show me. I was very tempted to sing that. Don't get me wrong. But anyway, um, I will save you that. Have a good week, everyone. I will see you in December. Oh my gosh, December. This year has gone so fast. Anyway, have a good month, everyone, and I'll talk to you all later. Happy crafting!